Alrighty folks, welcome back. The plan for today is to talk about uh, what we call the minimum best hand. Uh, is a you know kind of unique challenge run uh, or you know I also call it the min best run. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, if I play this three here, uh, we'll get you know about 4,500 points, and there we go. We've got 50,000 uh, over by just six. You know, almost exactly there. So you know, okay, you know when we beat the game, we get this end screen uh, that tells us uh, most of the time, you know, whatever our best hand is from the run. Um, and you know let's say you uh have like a particularly good high card run um and then maybe you get twenty thousand as your best hand um or you have like a particularly good high scoring rat uh run and you know maybe you get a million points or maybe you get a billion points or something like that people have done already um we want to do the opposite so instead of going for the most points the question is uh, what is the least points? So for example, uh, if you, uh, let's say, okay, we need 50,000 points here. If I have four hands, what I can do is do, you know, about 12,500 points for each hand, 12,500 times four. Okay. That's going to add up to 50,000. Now, if you have access to more hands, you know, let's say you've got uh, this burglar is going to give me plus three hands. If I copy it with this blueprint, that's going to give me another extra three hands. Um, and then you see, okay, there's 50,000 points that I need divided by uh, however many hands. Um, that'll determine uh, what is the minimum amount that I need. So, you know, in addition to this blueprint and this burglar, you can also get the uh, grabber voucher gives you an extra hand. Uh, in total, there are 11 hands is the most that you can get, uh, you know, at least in this demo version of the game. Okay, so with 11 hands, if I do 50,000 divided by 11, uh, you do a little bit of rounding and it comes out to uh, this 45 46 um, and then you can see here you know I've done it 45 46 11 times gives us just a little bit more than 50,000 all right so the plan for today uh, you know I want to say up front here disclaimer this was obtained using a glitch this is not a legitimate run here um, and you know i'm not going to go through the details i'm not going to tell you uh, how to perform this glitch yourself but i will tell you kind of what the effect is uh, the effect is you can kind of trick the shop into generating extra packs uh, so it offers you more packs that you can buy um, so that you can get, you know, extra tarot cards, you can get extra planet cards. Um, and so if you're looking at, you know, someone has some kind of high score that they're sharing, the way that you can tell that they've done this exploit is looking at here, we've got the cards purchased. Uh, 100 is kind of a large number of cards purchased. Um, relative to, uh, we've got this number of rerolls, 89 here a uh, number of re-rolls on its own is not necessarily suspicious um, For this seed in my last video I showed you know how we're able to get like $1,700 on this seed um, So, you know, maybe 89 re-rolls is a lot for most runs, but for this particular seed uh, Because we have so much money. Okay getting that many re-rolls is not a problem. But, okay, when we go over the cards purchased here, you know, most of the time when you're re-rolling in the shop, uh, it just gives you some jokers that you don't want, and then you just keep re-rolling without buying anything. Or every once in a while, maybe two or three re-rolls, uh, there's a tarot card that you want, or a planet card that you might want, and so you buy those. So typically, you're looking at uh, one card purchased for every uh, two or three re-rolls uh, with some slight exception to that um, 
most runs are not generating enough money to have high numbers of rerolls. So, you know, a typical run is looking at uh, between 10 and 15 rerolls. And then without rerolling, every time you enter the shop, you're buying stuff. So, you know, maybe you're looking at uh, 30 to 40 cards purchased in a normal run. All right, so all that being said, okay, we didn't do it yet. Uh, you know, the, the bounty is still out. Is it possible to complete this minimum best hand run? Now, uh, I think it is, and I think uh, it's possible with this seed in particular. Uh, so the plan for today is to do a partial walkthrough, you know, a little bit theory crafting, how someone might do it with this seed, um, and then, you know, maybe two or three days from now when I uh, do the legwork and finally work it out, uh, we'll see if we can actually do it. So, uh, one benefit of using this particular seed, uh, we have access to a lot of money. So the idea is, you know, whatever jokers we need or whatever deck manipulation we're going to need in order to pull this off, uh, we can afford it. Uh, getting uh, this 4546, you know, very exacting, precise number here, uh, it's going to require a little bit of work um, with getting the right jokers and planning cards and that sort of thing. Uh, on top of that, we want to hit this not just one time, but we want to be able to play the same hand over and over again 11 times. And so this seed has access to the gold seal, uh, which means we, you know, we play whatever our hand is, whatever our cards are going to be. In this case, we went for the high card, just one card at a time. After you play it, it returns your hand, so you can just keep replaying it the same thing 11 times over. Okay, so you know that's very hopeful there. Now, I originally said you know I wasn't going to try to do this run. Uh, it is, you know, somewhat tedious grind exploring and then optimizing any kind of seeded run. Uh, but I think it's this particular challenge is hard enough to be interesting, uh, but then also potentially attainable enough uh, to that it's actually worth trying to do, spending the time on it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new run on this same seed. And I'm going to, last time uh, I put out a video uh, demonstrating and doing this walkthrough for how to get the $1,700 or you know otherwise absurd amounts of money on this seed. And so having already done all of that legwork, what I wanna try to do is just follow the same path uh, as long as it makes sense to and then you know, maybe we'll reach a point where we can't anymore uh, And so I'll talk about uh, Kind of the slight differences in the pathing as we're going through this but trying to keep to the established path as much as possible That way, you know, we can reuse some of the work that we've already done All right, so I uh, apologize in advance I'm, you know, kind of reading through and trying to remember how we did this. Uh, so I might play a little bit slow. Uh, but the first moves here, okay, we want to discard and we're looking for, to win this in one hand, we need a uh, full house. So there we go, nines and sixes. Uh, we could have used the four sixes there, but uh, I said in my last video, what hands we play, what cards we play and discard determines how the deck is going to be shuffled for the next round. And so playing the full house there causes the deck to do this, give us all these uh, diamonds here. And so I know if I do some discards here, uh, again, now we've got this straight flush of diamonds, but instead of playing it right away, I'm going to discard these two cards. Uh, I could discard a third card. Um, I could use more than one discard, but I'm just gonna discard one time and then play this here. And again, that is just, you know, trying out these different variations, these different, uh, you know, branching paths is just going to uh, manipulate the shuffler and then cause it to deal out the cards that we want them to. 
Um, so now when we go over to the boss here, uh, we got a good sign here. We've got the uh, eight ball with the blueprint here. Uh, that is how we're able to generate all of our money is by generating lots of tarot each round. Um, and so seeing these eights uh, at the beginning here, that's what we want to see. Uh, and then the, you know, another thing that makes this seed particularly interesting is I get strength here to make more eights. I have a fool to give me more strength to give me more eights, uh, which means I'm able to make as many eights as possible as early as possible. And so that's why, you know, with the first couple of rounds, we had to manipulate uh, the shuffler in a certain way so that we get exactly this rollout here. It just works out so nicely. Ending here with, uh, you know, in addition to our pairs of eights, we do need to win the round. We do need to get our 600 points. So uh, two full houses is just barely going to do it uh, because we calculated it to work out that way. Uh, generating a little bit of money here. Um, that's why we're holding on to the hermit card so that we could save it uh, for the shop. Now, uh, in the original run, uh, we take the moon here to give us clubs and then we the gen the eight ball is going to give us another moon and uh, we go for flush houses. So the main difference between uh, what I'm doing in this run and what happened in the previous run is uh, flush houses are illegal. We can't do flush house anymore. Uh, flush house base gives you 200 times 20 uh, is 4,000 points. But then on top of that, you know, if you add in the points, uh, the chips from the cards themselves, uh, it takes you very quickly over uh, our 4,600 or 4,500 or whatever it is the target is going to be. So the thing about the minimum best hand challenge is uh, I want 4500 to be the best hand for the whole run. I can't go over that at any point during the run. So instead of using uh, flush houses, we're going to try to make it work with just regular full houses and maybe, uh, you know, score with some other hands as well. So, okay, we're going to leave the moon here, um, but then following the path that we already calculated, Okay, we're gonna pick up the summit and the emperor, and we do at the end need, uh, you know, I'll explain why a little bit later, but the thing that we need to find is for our high card, we want 11 of the Pluto uh, planet cards. Uh, so we need to be picking up these uh, celestial packs early and often. So I'm just taking a peek here. Um, also, I said since our flush houses are illegal, uh, I'm going to pick up this earth here to buff uh, our full house enough to get us where we need to be. So let's go ahead and take that um, and then I think it's safe if we start the next round. All right, going through uh, the same as before, we discard some stuff here holding the tens and eights because uh, last time, you know, with the moon tarot, we take these eights and we turn them into clubs. So we can make our clubs uh, flush houses with eights and tens. Um, we aren't allowed to make flush houses, so we're going to, okay, pretend uh, we did that already. Um, the other thing we want to do is use our Emperor uh, and then just sell the cards that we get. Uh, this by spawning in these extra tarot cards that sort of moves us further down the queue of tarot cards. So we just want to dig deeper and deeper uh, for whatever tarot that we're going to need. Uh, next, okay, what are we trying to do here? We've got uh, these here. Um, and, you know, in my original video, uh, this eight here is an eight of clubs. Uh, doesn't matter what we're going to do to follow the same path and get the same 
shuffler, you know, dealing us the same deck uh, as before, we'll just play the same card in the same position. So this should work out fine. There's a pair of eights. Uh, Wheel of Fortune, we're going to sell for interest. Uh, Hierophant, we shouldn't need. Then we want these here. Play the same eights in the same position, even though they're not clubs. Okay, sell some more tarot. Ace, nine, six, five, two. Nope. Okay, almost blundered there. I want to play these eights. Okay, here it is. Uh, like I said, that second moon shows up. Um, so after I discard here, you'll see, okay, I've got some tens and an eight and I should be able to make a flush house here, um, but we're gonna skip that. Uh, we're gonna still sell this strength. And uh, with the summit, uh, this should be, you know, enough on its own. There we go, 2,000 points, uh, 2,200. Now we wanna pay attention to, uh, like I said, I want my hands to be worth enough points that I'm still able to win each round, but not worth too much that, you know, I can't go over my 4,600. All right, so next, uh, let's sell, use the Hermit, gratification and surplus here. Go ahead and pick up this Celestial Pack. Uh, doesn't have anything, want, that's fine. All right, this is gonna give us Juggler. Uh, one more time, gonna give us Temperance. followed by another Temperance. And if we re-rolled, okay. Uh, in the original run, we skip over this High Priestess because we don't need it. But because we're looking for Planet cards, because I wanna find my Pluto card, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and crack this open here. Now, uh, the first Pluto I think is something like the 22nd or 23rd uh, planet card in the run, so it's way late. Uh, but that's fine, I just have to dig for it. So by opening up this priestess here, by popping out these planets here, it's just gonna move us further down the queue. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, I don't need either of those. Reroll. Now I've got the earth card being offered. Um, I'm going to skip this one uh, because I happen to know I have a hermit coming up and I want to make sure that I have uh, the money. But I will be picking up another earth later. Like I said, I want the full houses to be better. Not too much better, but better enough. Here's our egg. You know, uh, uh, I said in the last video, this uh, tech where we buy the gratification, we get the money from two temperances, and then by selling the gratification, that actually earns us money. All right, here we go. Uh, I wanna play, the eights are red instead of black, but I'll play sort of the same ones in the same positions as before. Once again, I apologize if I'm playing a little bit slow. I'm just trying to be very careful to follow the path that I figured out. All right, these, okay, we can play some eights. Here's that hermit I said was coming up. There we go, just barely enough to get full value. Uh, what's next? Next, I want nines, some eights on the side here. Strength, uh, a thought that I had was, if I use this strength here, I can turn these aces into twos, and then at the end, 
the card that you know we calculated it and the way that it works out is we want to get uh, a three as our high card gives us exactly the number that we want so we want to be able to find our threes when we get to the final encounter so i thought about you know maybe upgrading these aces into twos and then later on we get more strength we can turn those twos into threes and fill our deck with threes uh maybe what makes that slightly difficult at least at this point in the run is if i turn these aces into twos then as i'm trying to follow my walk through follow the same path as before uh you know when i'm supposed to play an ace and i see some twos i have to figure out which of those twos used to be an ace because i have to play exactly the same cards in order to get exactly the same deal so to be safe we'll just not use this strength here but uh, we do want to keep in mind that that's technology that we can use uh, later on in the run when it's safe fool is going to give us hermit here uh, we've got some discards uh, you know, just discarding to find my eights. Um, discard the red 10 here. This 10 would be clubs, but we don't need it to be. Uh, this full house should be fine. All right, uh, in the shop, we get offered this spectral pack. And here, if I use this sigil, that's gonna turn all of these to clubs, meaning I'm gonna have all of my tens are clubs. So anytime in the run when I would normally play just a regular full house, eights and tens, if all my tens are clubs and three of my eights, you know, here we're gonna get another eight of clubs. Uh, if three of my eights are clubs and all of my tens are clubs, uh, I run the risk I could accidentally run into a flush house um, and so I don't want that to happen but what I do want is I still need to open the spectral pack because when I open the pack and it shows me this hand then the arcana pack will show me a different hand and then you know when I go to the next round uh, the deck will be shuffled in a certain way so in order to get the shuffling that I want, I need to open the spectral pack, but I'm not gonna take any of this. Uh, next, we're gonna open the Arcana pack, and we can go ahead and take a wheel here. All right, next, uh, after some re-rolling, uh, in my original pathing, uh, we swap out the summit, picking up the to-do list. Um, which works out fine if you're playing flush houses because flush houses is so many points uh, It wins the round all on its own But if we're not doing that and if we're kind of limiting ourselves on our fl regular full houses You know not being able to work be worth too many points then uh, it's not safe It's not safe to take this to-do list um, So we're gonna keep the summit here for the extra uh, multi bonus All right, and then after a couple more re-rolls, uh, let's go ahead and sell, use the Hermit, and then go next. All right, here's where things start to get a little bit weird. So last time when we've got the, uh, the to-do list, it wants us to play a flush. So the flush is all our eights are clubs, here's a five of clubs, here's a three of clubs, and then one of these fours is clubs and so what it looks like is this it looks like this alternating pattern now if you you know you can run the tape back and you can look at the spectral pack and in the spectral pack it's actually the four of spades is the one that gets turned into clubs so if this four of spades gets turned into clubs then clubs happen uh, after hearts and so uh, it looks like this so you know as I'm going through and I'm trying to retrace our steps here I want to make sure I'm playing the correct four um, and I said in the vi other video the game remembers what each card used to be 
um, and it kind of uses that information when it's determining how to deal out your cards. So if I want the cards to be dealt out the same, I have to play the exact same card. Even if it looks different, I want to play the same card in the same position. Um, also, you know, kind of a weird thing, uh, if you turn a card into stone, you know that it kind of loses its face and you can't really tell what it is. But the game remembers, so if you take a stone card and you turn it into glass, it will turn it back into what it used to be. Uh, a glass, of course. Kind of interesting. Anyway, here's our flush. Looks weird, but this is actually a flush of clubs. Uh, we're gonna sell our tarot. And next, uh, the instructions are we want another uh, flush here. There we go. Then we've got some discards. Holding on to our eights and tens. So I want to drop the aces. And okay. I want to make sure. There we go. Sell the sun. We're going to hold on to the strength because we're trying to use that to. Um, we will get a seven that has a gold seal and we're gonna turn it into an eight. Okay, we want tens and eights. There we go. Okay, Arcana pack. We know that this wheel is going to give us a holographic card. Um, before we have the uh, foil to-do list instead of the summit. And so when you use this wheel of fortune, it puts the holographic on the eight ball. Uh, this time, since we don't have the uh, foil to-do list, the holographic will land on the third joker. So I'm going to put it on the egg instead because this summit, I am going to sell it. We do want to use the burglar. And so uh, instead of this being holographic, I want the egg. There we go. Okay, we need the grabber in order to get, uh, you know, our 11th hand in the end. And open up additional celestial pack okay i don't want any of that we're supposed to re-roll four times okay now now we have enough money i feel comfortable okay i want to buy this earth here so that my full houses are good enough all right we should be good okay i want the gold seal Okay, discard these, discard these, and then we're gonna play three fours. Okay, so it looks a little bit weird. Uh, in the original run, we had the to-do list and we needed this three of a kind. Now we don't have the to-do list, but we do wanna keep following the same path. Um, there probably exists some alternative path, you know, some version of this that is using the to-do list for extra money, extra value. Uh, I just didn't want to do the extra work of figuring it out. Uh, you know, let's try to use, reuse as much of the work as we've already done before. Uh, now we're gonna play eights and tens. Okay, so to-do list says two pair. There's my two pair. There's my full house. Okay, and so notice here, 
Uh, with that full house, uh, you're in about 2,200 points. Uh, that's going to give us what we needed here. If we didn't have the, uh, the two planet cards that we picked up, the two earth cards, uh, that full house combined with this full house would not be enough points. Um, again, you know, wanting to try to follow the same path. So we do need at least those two, um, or I think you can get away with just one of the planet cards. If you buy a third planet card, uh, the full house uh, with the nines is worth too many points and it actually puts us at like 4,300 points or something like that. And so we don't get to play this extra hand. So, you know, we got to be a little bit precise here. Uh, like I said, enough points, but not too many points. Okay, there's our seven. Okay, Arcana Pack is going to allow us to get rid of five and four. Extra Celestial. And there's finally our first Pluto. Okay, we do want to get to Burglar eventually, so in order to make that happen, we do have to reroll a few times here and a few times each round until we hit that Burglar. Um, one of the nice things that happens here, conveniently, we get another Pluto. Alright, so, you know, what is that? Uh, we calculated that you need... Uh, exactly 11 Pluto cards is going to work here. So if you think about it, uh, I need to get on average one Pluto card every shop from now on. You know, we're already in anti three, we skipped the small blind. Uh, we don't have that many rounds left. Actually, I think some rounds we need to pick up two Pluto cards at a time. So, you know, not, you know, one of the, things that made the glitched run work is by getting the extra celestial packs you get extra planet cards you get the extra pluto cards no problem here i still think it's possible um, and we need to do you know however many re-rolls in order to find the jokers that we want and through re-rolling you know not just in the celestial packs but we will be able to pick up some planet cards, some Pluto cards just from the shop offering, or you know, with the eight ball tarot cards, we're gonna get some priestess, um, and some of those could also potentially give us uh, the Pluto that we need. All right, and there we go, there's the burglar. Oh, I forgot uh, that it came up this early. Okay, so burglar. Now I want to drop my summit, put in my burglar, and if we're gonna use the burglar, we need to uh, put the blueprint on it. There we go. So we should be set up here. All right, and one of the major optimizations uh, that took me a long time to work out is now that I have this for, uh, gold seal seven here. I do want to turn it into an eight. I need in my 39 card deck, I need it to be in my starting hand so that I can immediately use this strength card. So that took me several tries and you know, just trial and error manipulations of the hands in order to get this in the starting hand, um, which is why I wanted to follow the previous path as closely as possible because this is really hard to get this but now that we have it uh, let's just continue following the same path so we're going to use a uh, glass card here because it's going to break the first one all right i fucked up already <laughs> uh, i was supposed to move uh, the blueprint onto the eight ball. 
Um, I don't think it's going to matter very much, but uh, you know, that is something to keep in mind there. Uh, so here let's play Ace, uh, okay. Before I played the leftmost eights because all of these were clubs and they were sort of like interchangeable, um, I believe the order was this for the eights. Um, and so, you know, like I said, with the when I turn all these into clubs and with the game sort of remembering what they used to be, it will present you in the hand the eight that used to be spades is furthest to the left and the eight that used to be diamonds is going to be furthest to the right and so you can kind of figure out what the cards used to be that way you know if you're you know going through and trying to follow along but okay trust me that that's the correct eight that we need to play All right, Hermit here, uh, we're supposed to have another glass card. Uh, that's an oopsie, but uh, I don't think it's gonna matter too much. So, you know, we'll just play through the rest of this round. All right, let's use the wheel. Okay, I don't need this. I do want to see these planet cards, um, and I don't want to use any of them. Okay, nine with eights, five and three. Okay, that's fine. The Fool is supposed to spawn in with a death card, uh, but we got the priestess instead. Uh, I think I'd rather have the death card. So I'm gonna hold on to the fool. Um, here, we normally make some extra eights here. So again, we're kind of going off the path here, but I think the next play is to play these eights, just to get them out of our hand. Now we can do the death move that we were supposed to do. And I want the right side tens with the right side eights. And I want the Ace of Hearts. All right, now we have all of the gold seal cards that we want so we can very safely just play out pairs. And I do want this two of hearts to be an eight. And then ending with a full house here. So uh, I wanna point out again, uh, you, another one of the optimizations in the original run uh, was, I want to be able to play, 11 hands is a lot of hands. And you know, if I'm playing the eights two at a time, uh, it works out that because I have no scoring jokers except for this one holographic here, my pairs of eights are worth only 300 points. Um, and that is what is allowing me to play 11 hands is that the hands aren't worth that much. Um, so you wanna be careful about not having too many uh, sort of like base scoring jokers that are going to increase uh, your eights when you play them. 
Um, or, you know, later on down the line, I do want to be able to make, you know, let's say 15 or 14,000 or 28,000 points each round. So, you know, the pairs of eights aren't going to work. And so this having the gold seals allows us to sort of calculate and then adjust exactly how many points that I want. So I could do a couple hundred points with a pair of eights or I can scale it up um, five eights with this holographic. I think that comes out to still um, only 4,000 points, uh, which is good because we're not allowed to go over 4,500. Um, or, you know, I could scale it back four at a time or three at a time. Um, but it should be, we can end here with this full house. All right, in the original run, uh, I think I didn't take this hone here. Um, so what this hone does is when you use a wheel of fortune, uh, what it does is it ran, basically it generates a random number from zero to 100. And then if that number is bigger than 80, then it'll give you a certain result. Uh, not really, it generates a random number from zero to one, but you could think of it as scaling into like a percentage range. And if it's, you know, higher than 80, then it will pay out your wheel of fortune. Um, and in that range higher than 80, you know, there's different categories for, uh, whether it's going to be holographic foil or, uh, polychrome. And so picking up this hone voucher, the synergy with Wheel of Fortune is it moves the payout window. And so, you know, if these cards are appearing two times more often, what that means is instead of getting 80 or higher is a payout, it makes it 40 or it makes it 60 or higher. So you have a 40% chance of payout. You have a twice the uh, probability of your Wheel of Fortune working. And so the behind the scenes, the way the game is deciding which Wheel of Fortune pays out and which one doesn't, for each Wheel of Fortune, it generates a random number, and that number is already known uh, at the start of the run. Uh, which means a number, you know, let's say it rolls a 65 or something like that. Normally, that's not a payout. Um, and so in the original run, I didn't want a payout, so I didn't take the home. Uh, but here, uh, in order to get the score that we want to get at the end, uh, we calculated that we need plus 30 chips from having a foil card. So uh, taking this home here will turn one of the Wheel of Fortunes that didn't pay out before, will turn it into a payout and it will turn it into a foil in particular. Um, so we do need to pick this up here. Celestial pack, okay, luckily getting us another Pluto here. Uh, in the original run there are no more rerolls from here on out we have uh, all of the jokers that we want we have the we were to pick up juggler and the egg and we rolled a couple times in order to find this burglar and then that's it we're done for the rest of the run uh, in order to get the constellation joker that's the last piece of the puzzle for this min best run uh, you saw at the beginning of this video that we need 80 re-rolls in order to get there. So, you know, if I look at, let's see here, this is, we're going into anti-4, um, which means we have all of anti-4 and all of anti-5 in order to find our constellation. That's uh, five or six shops. So in order to hit 80 re-rolls, I need to, I can't afford to do all of those re-rolls in one shop. 
but what I can do is I can spread it out. So in the end, we will be able to earn something like $1,500, $1,700. Uh, so I should be able to hit 80 rerolls as long as I spread them out. So maybe uh, here I'm supposed to reroll eight times. Maybe the next time I reroll 15 times or something like that. Uh, there exists some number that it works out. Uh, we'll just have to figure out what that is. Uh, but then here, okay, this hand is exactly the same as it was before um, in the previous version of this, the previous run, which means, okay, we've avoided stepping on butterflies and we've avoided, uh, you know, murdering our grandfather and creating paradoxes and branching timelines and stuff like that. We're on track to where we need to be. So basically, uh, we can follow the same path up to this point. And then now the main difference is going to be uh, I'm looking for when I get strength tarot cards before we would just sell them because we didn't need them. But now what we want is our eight. I need to upgrade it into a nine and a 10 and face cards and an ace if you give it or a yeah ace if you apply strength it'll give us a two and then one more time gives us a three. So we should be able to find enough strength cards to loop all the way back around to a three. Uh, is going to be somewhat a challenge, but uh, it is possible. Uh, so that's, you know, like I said, uh, this video is just about theory crafting. The bounty is still out for this min best run. Uh, so we're gonna stop here and then you know, when I figure it out, we will pick back up from this same place.